right, so we have a refrigeration cycle. Hopefully you have this drawn. Just like we have all the components here, we're gonna go through the refrigeration cycle on the unit. So here we have a unit, and this is very typical. We see the condensing coil all the way on the outside. So our compressor is actually gonna be located on the inside of this unit. It's gonna be underneath this fan. So we shut the power off. So after we remove the condenser fan motor, we can see our compressor. So the compressor is going to suck in a low temperature, low pressure superheated vapor. It's gonna pump out a high temperature, high pressure superheated vapor. It's also called a vapor pump. It moves the refrigerant. This line is the shortest line in the whole system. It's called the discharge line. It's flowing away from the compressor. It's a high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor. If this system was running, I would not be able to touch it now because it would burn me. We want to make sure this stays under 225 degrees Fahrenheit to protect the oil from breakdown. Here we can see that there's bins in this discharge line. And the reason that bins are in there is to allow for vibration. Those bins absorb the vibration so it doesn't break. From there, our refrigerant enters into our condensing coil. So approximately the very top section of this condensing coil is where refrigerant desuperheats. Uh, that's sensible heat. It's simply dropping in temperature. So the middle section of this condensing coil is condensing. The refrigerant's literally changing state from a vapor back into a liquid. As it changes state, it's rejecting a massive amount of latent heat. It is changing state, rejecting heat from a vapor to a liquid. And if we look on the outside, if we look on the outside, we can see the same thing. It's just simple heat transfer. Refrigerant changes from a vapor to a liquid, rejecting heat. Now the majority of this is going to be saturation. Now after we've changed state from a vapor to a liquid, the very bottom part of this condensing coil, that's what's gonna be subcooling. It's gonna take it below saturation we can measure subcooling. That's what we call sensible heat. So here, we're gonna leave the refrigerant and go back out of this liquid line, the line going outside of the unit. So here's our liquid line, and this is a 100% liquid. It is a subcooled liquid. If I touch it, it's gonna be warm to my touch, but the refrigerant is subcooled below its saturation temperature. We go into our liquid line filter dryer. You can see there's an arrow pointing on the liquid line filter dryer away from the unit towards the inside. We continue on with our liquid line and it's going to go into the building. Our liquid line comes into the building. We're going to follow our liquid line up. It's a warm, high pressure, subcooled liquid. The line comes up and goes right into this box. Inside of this box is the evaporator for the inside unit. So we're going to take this cover off so we can see what's happening inside. So here we have our expansion device, also called our metering device. It restricts it from a high pressure liquid to a low pressure saturated mixture. The refrigerant leaves the metering device as approximately 75% liquid, 25% vapor. That 25% vapor is called flash gas, also called adiabatic expansion. What's happening is that liquid is immediately flashing, changing state from a liquid to a vapor. It's absorbing heat, but it's absorbing heat from itself. It's absorbing heat from the rest of the remaining liquid, so it drops that temperature of that refrigerant, so that way we're ready to start boiling. It's a very, very important process in this system. Now we have our evaporator coil, which is really, really, really important. Inside the majority of that evaporator coil, the refrigerant is saturated. The refrigerant's boiling. The refrigerant's changing state from a liquid to a vapor, absorbing a massive amount of latent heat. It's absorbing heat away from the air. So we're cooling the air. We're taking the heat away from the air and putting that heat into the refrigerant. That's the majority of that evaporator coil. After we boil all that liquid into a vapor, we can continue to add heat to it. It's still a low temperature. So what we're gonna do is continue to add heat to it, but this is gonna be sensible heat. The refrigerant now is still absorbing heat, but it's measurable. Overall, it's the very last little section of that evaporator coil, and it's ultimately a small amount of heat, but we can measure it. This is where superheat starts, and it's absorbing that superheated vapor. It's still absorbing heat, boiling that beyond or above its saturation temperature. Here we have our suction line, also called our gas line. It's gonna be a low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor. This line's insulated because we do not want to absorb any more heat. And we suction line all the way outside. Here's our suction line, it continues. 
Suction line continues, continues, continues. It's flowing back towards the outdoor unit. The suction line goes to a little valve, but it's still the suction line. Here we can see that suction line, the fat line coming in. We follow it along the bottom. It comes up and then it goes right back to the compressor. Low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor. We want to make sure our superheat is above five degrees so that we protect this compressor from any liquid refrigerant.